So before the year of 2014, I had not seen a single Godzilla movie, not because I wasn't interested in it, but because I didn't have access to it. But then in December of 2013, we saw that teaser to 2014 Gareth Edwards Godzilla. Oh my gosh, it looked incredible. How could I not be excited for this? I thought, hey, this could be a great way to get into Godzilla. Brian Crest is in this? Well, this movie already has my money. All right, let's see how this plays out. Then when it finally came out in 20. 14 I watched it and I hated it of course we will get into this a little later and I will go into more depth in another video so after the Gareth Edwards movie I had zero interest in the MonsterVerse movies so when King of the Monsters came out I passed that up and unfortunately I didn't see Kong Skull Island in theaters but I eventually I did watch it and we will talk about it alongside the Godzilla movies spoiler alert it's amazing. However, while I was not interested in the American Godzilla movies, I was very much interested in watching the Toho Japanese Godzilla movies. But I never got around to it because I could never find the time. So around the time when the first trailer of Godzilla vs. Kong came out, I wasn't interested in it. But the thing that turned it around was a comment that said, Godzilla 2014 is the best Godzilla movie of all time. Then someone replied to that comment and said, and one of my favorite movies of all time. So this got me thinking. What is the best Godzilla movie? So after hunting down all the DVDs I could find, or at least streaming it, and watching Godzilla vs. Kong when it came out back in 2021, yes, it's a little late, I know, but since I've now officially seen Godzilla Minus One, as of right now when this video is posted, I have seen all 37 Godzilla movies. And of course, that's including the American movies and the shitty anime trilogy. And this was not easy, let me tell you. I bought this gorgeous behemoth. This has the first 15 Showa Godzilla movies, first 15 Godzilla movies in general. It has some really amazing artwork, and it goes into detail about the behind the scenes with each movie. There is a lot of misconceptions about what exactly is a Godzilla movie, what the franchise is. After 2014, after people have aired their frustrations about not having a likable human protagonist, or at least after the death of Brian Cranston's character, people who were fans of the MonsterVerse movies, Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla King of the Monsters, actually argued against and says, well, all the movies are like that. We're not here for the humans, goddammit, we're here for motherfucking Godzilla. But upon watching all 37 Godzilla movies, I learned a lot about these movies. The worst Godzilla movie isn't the worst Godzilla movie. And there's quite a few contenders on which is the best Godzilla movie. But to go back to the point of, we're not here for the humans, no one cares about the humans, even going to say that the human subplots are always the boring part is a lie. Because there's some really fun storylines with the humans. The Godzilla movies are much more than monsters. Monster fights, there's people with ESP and telepathy, there's alien invasions, we're talking actual aliens like monkey men, cockroach people, there's time travel, there's a civilization that's underground. I mean, I don't want to spoil every crazy stuff that happens in the series, but that's just to give you an idea of how wonderful this movie franchise is. When things get crazy, that's when it's at its most fun. And I am absolutely here for it. This franchise feels like a breath of fresh air to me. I absolutely love the Godzilla series. This series goes in places I would never expect. It always keeps you guessing with each movie. The lore is insane, not just with its monsters, but sometimes with its world building. On top of the aliens I just mentioned, there's this whole unique history with not only Godzilla, but Mothra and Ghidorah, which does change with each timeline. This gives the filmmakers more breathing room and flexibility and this way they could tell new and great stories without being tied down to what came before by previous continuities. Every monster is unique with their own special abilities and very creative design choices. The practical effects like the puppetry for the monsters and even the destruction is phenomenal. It is incredibly satisfying and fun to watch. And the Godzilla theme is easily top five of my favorite themes of all time. Every time it plays, you get excited, you get amped up. It's so thematic, it builds tension and atmosphere and it sends chills down my spine. Every time Godzilla walks into frame with this music kicking in, please watch this series. It is so, so good. However, if you don't feel like watching all 37 Godzilla movies, 34 if you're just counting the live action movies, because let's face it, 
not every series is perfect in terms of quantity. It does have some stinkers here and there, not as many as you think there are. If I could be honest, I'd say only a handful, like maybe four or so is pretty bad. Maybe five. And that's not including the stupid anime trilogy. Don't bother with that, it's awful. It had some really great ideas, but it's utterly boring. But anyway, if you want to wait just a little bit longer, I am making more videos, one that talks about the worst Godzilla movies, and one that talks about the best Godzilla movies. So if you want to know which ones to look out for, and ones to avoid, then I guess stick around.